All right, welcome to episode 21 of Mind Chat. My name is Colin Gallagher, and this week my guest is Dan Bloom. Thanks very much for coming on the show, Dan. No problem. So I'm in a world here that um, you graciously sent to me, and it looks cool and amazing and um, very um, exciting. Um, so p let me just um, introduce yourself and w what you teach and why this world exists, and maybe you can guide me along the way here. Yeah, uh, I'm a ninth grade biology teacher. This is my fifth year teaching. I'm relatively new to Minecraft, but I was working with a uh, game designer who was very fluent in it. And together we collaborated to create this uh, Minecraft cell world. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing a, this was to actually prepare, this was a pre-lab activity for a DNA extraction okay. lab. Um, and the main learning goal that I wanted to accomplish here was to uh, have the students understand why we were going to use the different uh, chemicals in the lab mm. and what exactly those chemicals would do during the experiment. We okay. had up to this point learned about the different parts of a cell and the composition of the different parts of the cell. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted, I really wanted to give them some sort of understanding beyond me giving them a uh, lab procedure and them just sort of going through and just something happens at the end but they don't really understand why. Right. So what I thought would be cool is if we could shrink the kids down so that they're, they could actually fit inside of a cell and they could actually tinker with the different parts, um, how great that would be. Mm -hmm. So we could essentially, before the lab even takes place, the kids can kind of do this exploratory activity to figure out what materials they would need and uh, and it's a real experience for them because they're they're the ones who are actually finding the materials tinkering trying seeing what works and documenting that as they go absolutely so this was like um, um, a single player experience so like there was multiple copies on on the, the computers in in your school so every student had had their own basic adventure yes so it wasn't like a whole class going in and rampaging around no, there was not. Um, we tried it. We uh, thought of a lot of different ways of doing this, and the reason we had to end up with a single player experience was so that we could really um, make the different components of the cell respond to certain chemicals. Right. So I'll actually start walking you through this right now. Yeah, let's do that. As you start walking towards the cell, you'll see some signs that. Um, that tell you some of the goals of this activity, and there are also chests with mm -hmm. materials. So uh, I don't know anything about DNA extraction, so um, <laughs> so right. you're gonna have to be your your biology teacher here for me. <laughs> and and to be honest, the kids didn't know anything about DNA extraction before this as well. So as you're walking to you, you towards it, you sort of start equipping yourself with all these uh, chemical tools. All right, I'm going to do um, that. I'm going through this. So there's. There's five total, and one of the things, not all these tools are actually used in the extraction. Okay. So uh, there's certain ones that kids need to, they have a lot to choose from, and uh, some will be useful and some won't be. Right. There's also a made-up tool, which is the DNA extractor, um, which is just sort of, sort of something we made so at the end they can actually pick up the DNA. Okay. All right. So I've got four tools, and I'm going to get the soap. And I'm ready. So up the ladder. Up the ladder. The long ladder. The long ladder. Very inner space moment yeah. here. So at this point, the kids, once you arrive at the top of the platform, mm -hmm. kids find themselves face to face with the uh, cell membrane. Right. So at this point, we have learned about the cell membrane, what it's made of. Um, they know it's made of fats. Okay. And so then they can start playing around with the materials. And if you try something like right now I have salt equipped yeah. and it's not breaking anything. Nope. So the kids can start equipping the different chemicals and eventually they'll find that uh, the soap will actually break through the membrane. Wow. So they so, sort of start paving so their a, way. A, sorry. Sorry, they, they're making a passageway through the membrane. Um, and then even just the, the composition of the membrane using the wood and the glass um, and using it in the, this order actually does mimic as well um, 
the actual cell membrane composition mm -hmm. and relates. So as they're doing this activity, not only are we focusing on this lab, but they can also make connections to things we learned in class. Um, but there's different uh, chemical components in the cell membrane right. um, that is represented using these Minecraft materials. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. I'm, I, I made it. Yeah. So once you're inside, you have this beautiful looking cathedral style oh. um, room. <laughs> That's uh, great. And so the kids will start noticing these different shapes of organelles. Now they mm. can make some more connections. There's all these green and purple organelles all right. um, that they will recognize based on our classroom discussions and based on um, these sort of major cell parts that we learned about. Mm -hmm. However, for this, they don't really have any bearing other than to make the cell look cool and have the kids make some connections to other class content. Right. But then they also need to remember where we're doing a DNA extraction. They're trying to come into the cell to find the DNA. Mm -hmm. So uh, they need to remember where the DNA is in the cell. Okay. That's going to be this big round circle in the middle. That's going to be our nucleus. Okay. So the kids get to walk around inside the cell. They get to look around. I have, um, I have like a handout that accompanies this that has them make some connections of, for the different things that they see and try out different things in the cell. But if you make your way all the way across that room, mm -hmm. yeah, find making a, my way down. Yep, you'll find another ladder which will lead you up to the nucleus. Okay. The big yellow stick. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm heading up. Ah, no, it's just, like a, just, just a great experience just to, like, you know, be at this level, you know? <laughs> mm hmm And that was something I really, I really wanted the students to feel like they were shrunk down and getting to explore the cell. Mm -hmm. um, as a, as a biology teacher, I find that these microscopic components, teaching them is very difficult for students because uh, it takes a lot of abstract thought. Right. Um, which can be frustrating or confusing. So here, um, I really got to give them an experience where they felt like they were inside something and got and could and could re you know think back on it later and remember. Oh, I remember doing this, and so <laughs> you know now now I sort of understand this better. Right. It's every teacher's hope and dream. Yeah. So, so I'm using the soap to get through into the nucleus. Is that the right? Obviously, yep, it's working. It's, it's, yep. it's the same sort of membrane as the outside of the cell. All right. Now, once you're inside, you'll see almost this like stone monolith uh, kind of thing. The DNA is inside, and the stone that surrounds it is supposed to represent uh, these protective proteins that sort of like help organize and protect the DNA. Uh, yeah. So in order. In a DNA, a glass process, here. you need to not only get rid of the membranes that are holding the DNA inside, but you also need to eliminate the proteins that are protecting it. So they'll need a different tool because if they have the soap equipped, they'll see that it isn't doing anything. All right. So I'm heading down to this monolith very 2001 of Space Odyssey. Yes. <laughs> so this is the DNA strand. So how to break in to the protein barrier so the soap's not going to work this time soap's not going to work so they get to try around they get to try some different materials and eventually they'll find one that works all right acid no salt there we go right. so we've chosen to use spider webs to represent dna all right something we wanted something stringy yeah and well and so if you start going through the process of breaking through the proteins, you'll see the spider web DNA inside. Absolutely, yeah. Um, at this point, the students can use the DNA ex extractor tool to br actually break the DNA and collect it in their items. Yeah, I'm getting that. <laughs> they can bring that back to the front. There's a treasure chest at the at the start point where they're supposed to put it at the end after they've extracted the DNA. Oh yeah, I remember that at the at the spawn point. Yep. Very cool and experience. So that's the that's the entire experience. Um, 
it obviously is not a uh, sort of creative outlet for the students to you know make something of their own. Right. Uh, right. This, re this was really like an experiential hmm. lesson that has them with a, like a very specific learning goal. It added to what you usually teach. What did you do before this? You basically would go through animations, maybe on the on the web or. I mean, or something. Yeah, I mean to be honest, this I, this idea of like what is the soap and what is the salt doing during the lab, mm -hmm. um, it I I would usually just kind of like tell them. I'd like tell the students this is why we're using this, um, and they would never really understand. They would just you know the teacher saying to do something, so I'll just do something. Right. Um, but after the students had this experience, they were really able to. You know, I, I went into the cell with all these tools and like these were the ones that worked, these are the ones that didn't. And they could really talk about what was happening, uh, you know, during the experiment and then, you know, and to be able to explain that in their lab reports as well was very, uh, was very telling. Mm -hmm. and they, they could make that connection. Some of them were making connections that like, you know, I know that soap, um, Breaks down fats when you when you're cooking or something. You have fats on you. You need to use soap on your hands. Uh, and so they were able to make that sort of real world connection uh, between the using fats uh, to break down cell the membranes. Yeah. So do you after your first initial experience with Minecraft, do you have any other plans for using it? Yes. Um, so uh, I'm actually sort of like this entire year um, teaching my curriculum through this idea of uh, Jurassic Park. Oh. Um, almost using that it as like a vessel to get to all the content that I need to teach, but mm -hmm. do it in like sort of a fun, creative way. Yeah. Um, so the f the first half of the year was sort of about like if w if we could extract DNA from dinosaur blood and so that was this what this lab was and then sort of going through the process of like if we could clone a dinosaur how would we do it <laughs> in the springtime um, we're going to sort of play along with this idea that if we had cloned all these dinosaurs um, now we need now we need to start setting up ecosystems on an island so uh, we are going to be using Minecraft again but this time it will be in a way that students can create something of their own. Uh, right, we're going to yeah. set up an island and then each group of students will have um, a section of the island where they can build an ecosystem. So they'll have certain species of dinosaur. Um, mm -hmm. They'll need to start coming up with population numbers which would be sustainable um, while also building habitats for those dinosaurs. Wow. So you're you're gonna look back at this one and, and kind of after a couple of years you're gonna say, Well, that's where I started pretty yeah plain and simple, but now the kids are getting into create creative modes. Yeah. Sounds sounds great. I'd like I'd love to actually touch base with you after maybe at the end of this school year and, and see what what you've you've done. Of course. That would be awesome. I know you have to start your working day there in America yep. so I'll let you go I just want to say thanks a lot for for coming in to the 21st episode of Mind Chat um, it was awesome actually I learned a lot actually so it's just, that's great I don't have to go to Khan Academy and, and learn about DNA extraction now <laughs> mm -hmm. so um, Dan Bloom thanks very much for joining me this week thank you all right, that's the end of episode 21 of Mindshot, and we'll see you on the next episode, um, whenever that may be. Thank you so much.